and, and how is she as a, as a mother? Mm. Amazing mother. So funnily enough, I was talking about this with uh, somebody today. Um, she and I both agreed that the purpose of parenting was to enable your kids, not to control them, but to enable them. Yes. So we give them the tools that enable them to do whatever they need to do. Um, now, I, I did this by just basically, you know, sort of s s what, sitting back and watching Lucy doing it. But <laughs> I, I enabled Lucy to enable the kids. So she, she resented that a bit because she felt that I had all the fun and she had all the hard work, but she was true. But um, that's generally, no, nah. my, my, my sons adore me, but maybe that's a son dad thing. I don't know. Right. But uh, I, th I think you had daughters that adore you as well. So and yeah. your, and your wife would have to work <laughs> even harder with them because. She'd have the resentment of teenage girls at some point, yeah. But you know, it's it's moms. They um they always think that they're they they have this, this thankless job. You know that mm. they do everything. I mean, yeah. they, they they do everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and it can be thankless, right? Mm. But pff, mothers are just they're incredible. Like the thank you would never be enough. I right. think you know. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so so she brought up these kids to be completely independent and uh, enabled. And that is why Maya and Rena were also amazing people in their own right, because they weren't, you know, kids who stayed at home and expected their mother to do everything. They yeah. were completely independent. Uh, Rena was the youngest girl, daughter, so she was the most independent. Um, How, when did you know that she was going to be an independent child? Um, they you know were, they were, well, what happened was we had them very close together. We had five kids within six years. Wow. So what we realized was um, we couldn't actually parent them. Um, they'd have to parent themselves <laughs> uh, or each other. <laughs> so, so we created ways that they brought each other up. And that was, you know, there was, uh, she was a management consultant, Lucy, in her first, uh, first job. And I was a management consultant. So we sort of had a way of, of incentivizing, I don't know, incentivizing them, but, but actually just enabling them and sort of... Uh, Incredible. And, uh, and we had this wonderful Baruch Hashem, wonderful atmosphere in the home where they all loved each other and they all you know, got on with each other and uh, it wasn't obvious that would be the case. It's... It's... Um, <laughs> it's... That... That's, you know... Uh, it, parenting is tough. Parenting is tough. It's I'm you giving our time because I've got to. I've got tell to me how much time you got left. 15, 20 minutes. But okay. Um, the uh, no, the the. Uh, Maya no, I, I just want to say. I mean, when yeah. if your kids are are, you know, that for me when I see my kids, I have three sons, uh, seven, five, and almost two, and um, they're buds. Like they're they're yeah. friends. They're it's really a it's and a it's pleasure that you get as parents. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So you know, scream at me all you want, as long as you guys are good so together. So so this is in what they say about God, right? That. Uh, you know, God looks at us as children, and He just wants us to get on with each other. There's nothing that gives God greater pleasure yeah. than seeing us getting on with each other, but also with the other people in the world, right? With the Muslims and with the Christians, <laughs> whatever. That's the thing that gives God uh, what they call in Hebrew nachat ruach, which is like great pleasure. And uh, and I think it's something which, as mankind, we haven't really given God much pleasure yet. But um, I say well, there are possibilities for that. Uh, I want to talk about Maya. Um, Maya was very independent. She, I just told you about one thing that she did, which was a small thing, but just gives you a flavor of who she was. In her school, she was volunteering as a uh, national service in Yerucham, which, as you know, is a, a, a less affluent uh, town yeah. in the south of Israel. And uh, so she was uh, helping out in a school as a 20-year-old girl, helping uh, year nine girls um, acclimatize to the new school because they were first year in high school. And um, she did many different sort of activities, but she invented something which she called in Hebrew nishnosh parsh, which means uh, snack and parsha. Okay. Like, you know, we'd have like in English, we'd call it sort of nosh and drosh or something, whatever. You have like some name. Yeah. So she created this name. And on Thursday break time, when they had like a 20-minute break, she would get girls to, you know, if they wanted to come, she would go and buy, I think with her own money actually, snacks, chocolate bars or, or wafers, and she would prepare a one, you know, a sort of five-minute uh, uh, discussion about the Torah portion of the of the week. Let me turn that off. Okay. Um, so, so she she would um, she would prepare a uh, five-minute uh, discussion on the Torah portion of the week. And uh, and then the girls would be there. The twenty girls would suddenly turn up out of you know, hundred in a year or whatever, and and it would be a very nice atmosphere, and it would be voluntary, and it would just be fun, and it would be learning, and it would be sociable, 
and it was an opportunity for her to connect with the girls, but yeah. then connect with each other. That was that. She, she did that every week. She loved it, and she'd come back on Shabbat occasionally, and she'd tell us what she taught them, and it was always a nice idea and something inspiring. So when all this happened, uh, the school said, well, this is an amazing idea. They don't do it anywhere else, apparently, in Israel. So they said, well, every school should be doing it. So they have done a project, and now there are 560 schools in Israel that are doing Nishnosh Parsh, uh, where they, this school is sending out, you know, because not everybody has time to prepare something. The girls in, 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 in Yerachal are preparing the, 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 the page of learning. Um, and um, then they've got WhatsApp a group, so they, there's a girl contacts in each year nine right across the country, and they're setting up these little groups. They're buying the snacks, I think, themselves. I don't know if they have any money, or the parents are, are chipping in. Wow. And uh, they're learning something together, and it's all in memory of Maya. And I said to them, if they want to sp- you know, give me some more information about it, maybe I can talk about it to some Americans, uh, rabbis, who could start this initiative in America. So. Wow. wow. And, and wow. These, are, these are things that happened. You came earlier, you saw that... Uh, we, I was writing a letter in a, in a, in a Torah scroll. Uh, well, I've got a group here that want to basically take this Torah scroll around the whole of Israel and get every every child, man, woman, and child mm-hmm. in Israel to write a letter in a Torah scroll um, and in Ameri- and across the world. They want to actually get 50, t- 50 scrolls would have enough letters, 15 million letters, which would enable every Jew in the world to write a letter in a, in a Torah scroll. And the uh, idea being like to spark their curiosity in this to, spark the, to, to educate, spark their curiosity, okay. and create a feeling of unity and mm. achdut between the Jewish people. So these, so d- I, I could tell you a hundred projects like this that are going on at the moment around the world, which are, yeah. are just incredible. And then I'm talking about uh, Rina. So Rina um, was the girl who, in her class, and and every year this is what happened. Uh, the teachers would tell us that um, if there was a girl at the back of the class who had no friends, Rina was there with her arm around her. If um, there was a girl who wasn't included in the ball game, Rena would start a new ball game. Oh, and wow. r- her friends recently made, literally yesterday, made a video uh, professionally produced with uh, in, a, in a studio with m- uh, them singing and uh, I think um, and uh, pictures of, of Rena um, and and you know and and, and a story about uh, her life, uh, which was you know having in tears for four minutes. Um, but every picture, she was with a different group of girls. And that's who she was. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what was that day like? Um, to be honest, just shock. I mean, uh, and, and uh, my response to shock um, is adren- adrenaline. <coughs> and I was just like completely uh, uh, awake and completely sort of, you know, we have to, when, when we found out that it was their car, we had to drive as quick as we could to, the sp- to that spot. Did you have any hope? Uh, we had hope. And when we got there, we said, which car is it? They said it was a, a Kia, and ours was a Micra. So we thought, oh, my goodness, maybe, maybe we've, it's not our car. Yeah, <sighs> then, then, uh, whatever. So, uh, and then when we discovered it was them, uh, for sure, because they handed me Maya's ID card. Uh, then I drove straight down to Jerusalem because we knew that Lucy was in hospital having an operation. And then... You know, family and friends started turning up, and Karen, who had been uh, not with us at the time, she was in Jerusalem. She was there, and 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 and. and I, I don't think I cried particularly. I was just was very, you know, uh, uh, mindful uh, that we had to do the things we had to do. Um, and now it's hitting me much more. Now I'm crying much more, which I think is healthy. And the kids are crying, you know, or not because you thought you needed to keep it together for your family? I, th- I think it's so unreal. You know, if, if God forbid, you, somebody has a family member who's in hospital with cancer for 10 years and you're sitting by the bedside and this happens, I think, you know, then you cry immediately and, uh, you know, all the feelings happen. If, you have, if it's, God forbid, a par- an elderly parent who dies, so you cry and you, you feel the feelings immediately. I think when something like this happens, it's just so unreal. It, it's, uh, it, it, they disappeared, you didn't see them. Um, and you don't see them the next day, you don't see them the next day, and then at some point... You realize you're not going to see them ever again. 